I'm gonna start my timer. I brought two things up with me, my little sheet of notes and my timer because father said 10 minutes max and not a second more. So I'm gonna stick to that. But good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Regis O'Neill um, and I'm so happy to be here with all of you to talk about my experience going with a group of with it five, six of us, five or six, five parishioners uh, at the SEEK conference in St. Louis in, back in January. Um, I had a wonderful, wonderful experience, and Tim set the table uh, last week kind of talking about the general vibe of the conference and what it was like uh, in a broad, you know, 10,000 foot sense. So I thought I'd tell you a little bit about my personal experience, and when all of us speak, you'll get a little bit of a different flavor of what we each took away from it. So first I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself, um, because I am a brand new parishioner and I think none of you know me, which is totally fine. <laughs> um, I think it's been just about six months now since I joined the parish. Uh, I moved back to West Hartford about a year ago, a little bit of a homecoming because I went to the University of Hartford, so it's nice to be back. Uh, I love being here. Um, I am kind of your stereotypical cradle Catholic. Uh, I was baptized as an infant, grew up in a very strong Catholic home. My parents have a wonderful, strong Catholic marriage. They are wonderful examples of what it means to truly put oneself uh, second and another first, um, both in terms of their relationship with each other and for myself and my two younger sisters, Lena and Natalie. I grew up in Middletown, and I did, in fact, go to Xavier High School, so I'm sorry for any yes. Northwest Catholic <laughs> hearts that we broke in any sporting events uh, <laughs> back in my time. Uh, only a little sorry. <laughs> but uh, I, I was really kind of raised in this Catholic cocoon where I had a number of wonderful, wonderful role models and examples of what it means to be a strong Catholic and to live your faith out. My parents, my sisters, my dad's one of eight, big Irish Catholic family. I got about 40 first cousins, one of whom is a priest in the Archdiocese of Hartford, Father Philip O'Neill. If any of you have heard of him, he's uh, currently a military Air Force chaplain at an Air Force base in Germany uh, after spending time in Qatar and South Korea. I think he's nuts, but that's what he wanted to do. So point being, I've had nothing but fantastic Catholic role models growing up. So uh, with great power comes great responsibility, as Spider-Man is fond of saying. Um, and so I always felt like I was called to do something within the church. I was called to share my faith with someone else uh, or a number of other people in a special way. So after I graduated college, I decided to give a year of service to Capuchin Youth and Family Ministries in Garrison, New York, right on the Hudson River, uh, right across from West Point. We ran Catholic retreats for teenagers, about 80 of them during the year, um, culminating in a week-long service trip down to Harlan County, Kentucky, which is the third poorest county in America, coal mining country, where about 90% of the jobs disappeared in 10 years. Really, really poor spot. Um, and it was a transformative experience, uh, giving that year of service and working with young people, so much for, so much so, that when I decided, when I came back, I decided that I wanted to work in youth ministry. And so I actually went and took a job uh, at St. Bridget of Sweden Parish in Cheshire, which funny enough is where my cousin was stationed for a couple of years, uh, serving as the youth minister and the communications guru there. I had a high school youth group called the Next Generation of Disciples or the NGD, um, and we did all kinds of fun stuff. We had an absolute blast. And it was a, a major part of my life. I did that for three years. Um, and then after about three years, I started to feel a little bit of tension in my life. Uh, I was working a lot of nights, a lot of weekends, and I was you know, going to church five days a week, Monday through Friday. And I found myself not wanting to come back on Sundays. And I said, well, this is not how I want to feel. <laughs> this, is, this is a problem. This is affecting my spiritual life in a negative way. And so I discerned what my next step was going to be, and I actually decided to leave working in ministry because of how burned out I was. Uh, there was no line between my personal life, my professional life, and my spiritual life. Uh, and certainly our faith is supposed to infuse all aspects of our life, but it was getting unhealthy. And so I did what every good young man in Connecticut does, and I took a job in insurance. <laughs> I took a job with Chubb Insurance uh, in Simsbury doing employment practices claims. And the reason I took that job was because it was just a job, and I didn't have to take it home with me, as I did with my ministry work, um, because I cared very personally and very deeply about that. So if I had one or two kids come to a youth group meeting, I took it personally sometimes, and that would weigh on me a little bit. 
So I've spent a ton of time talking about myself and nothing about Seek because it's very important for you to realize the context in which I came to Seek. It was about a year after I made that switch from working in ministry to working in insurance, and I hadn't really done anything for my own personal spiritual development in that year. I kept going to Mass, kept availing myself of the sacraments, um, you know, certainly kept practicing my faith, but I hadn't done anything to enrich or deepen my faith. And so it came as a bit of a surprise, and I'll admit there was a little bit of discomfort when just a couple of months after I registered with the parish, I got a call from Father Ford saying, hey, <laughs> taking a group of people to see, do you want to come? And I said, can I think about it? <laughs> 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 it was a it was a it was a scary proposition because this was this was going to be the first thing that I had done to deepen my own spiritual faith and I was worried once again about getting burned out again. I didn't want to feel like that again, but I prayed about it, I thought about it and I eventually said, "Yes, I will go. I will trust that the Lord is calling me here for a reason." And I'm so so glad that I did. Um the trust came into play right off the bat when I yes, hopped on a plane with a bunch of people who I had spent a grand total of about two hours with. <laughs> we didn't know each other really at all before we went to see, I mean, you, you folks knew each other obviously, but I, I'm brand new, you know, I'm a baby parishioner. I didn't know anybody. Um, and so it was not only that, I'm also deathly afraid of flying. Uh, not a fan. I prayed so hard on the flight home that I actually broke my rosary. <laughs> but I'm here, so it worked. <laughs> um, so this, this radical trust that I decided to enter into paid off massive dividends right away. I know Tim talked about, and I'm sure you'll hear others talk about, that first mass in the dome where the St. Louis Rams used to play that first night with 22,000 people sitting there, worshiping, <laughs> singing the hymns, receiving the Eucharist, and you could hear a pin drop in the reflection period after everyone had received communion. It blew me away instantaneously. It was like all that fire that I had for ministry came right back. I felt called, this is one of the two things that I took away from my time at Seek, I felt called by the Lord to dip my toe back in the waters, to get more involved in my parish to do things like come and give a talk at a simple supper on a Friday night during Lent, or to run a Bible study, uh, which I'll plug my Lenten Bible study right at the end of this, or also to start lecturing. So if you're at the 1030 Mass this Sunday, I'll see you there. Um, point being, I had been away. I had taken some time to kind of cure that burnout, to refresh myself a little bit, and now this was the Lord calling me back through these 22,000 other people, but more specifically through the group from St. Peter Claver when we were there together because there were all of these magnificent, powerful talks and Eucharistic adoration masses that stick with me to this day. I mean, I go back and watch the talks all the time. <laughs> it's really, it was really something. But some of my favorite moments were the in-between, the quiet bits where, you know, we were out to lunch together or going out to dinner and swapping jokes and getting to know each other better and forming a small, strong Catholic community. That was what really, really did it for me. And I think that's the second piece that I took away from my time at Seek is that our church, capital C Church, the Catholic Church, is at its heart a community. Community is the lifeblood of what it means to be in relationship with Christ because we are all the body of Christ. And if the foot decides to stop coming, then the body's gonna tip over. If the head decides to stop engaging with the community, well then there's gonna be no direction for the rest of the body. So it's important that we engage with that community. Um, I think <clears throat> a lot of the time we as Catholics can really focus a little bit too much on you know, uh, ritual teaching, that sort of thing, and all of those are vital to the life of a Catholic. But we have to remember that we are first and foremost a community of believers whose chief goal is to help those around us get to heaven, full stop. And that's something that I've really been trying to remember uh, since I've come back from Seek. I'm gonna leave you with one thing uh, before I wrap up here, and I'm at nine and a half minutes, so I'm pretty close. <laughs> but the final piece is I wanna leave you with my favorite passage from the Bible. It's the story of Jesus and the woman caught in adultery. You know, when uh, they're all about to stone her and he says like he was without sin, cast the first stone. But that's not the piece I wanna focus on. It's after everyone drops their stones and walks away, Jesus goes up to the woman and he says, woman, who has condemned you? And she says, no one, sir. 
then after that, Jesus says two things. He says, neither do I condemn you, now go and sin no more. Both of those are vitally important. You can't have one without the other. But he leads with neither do I condemn you. So the two things that I took away from Seek are one, to not condemn people and to be a little bit more open and mindful of the fact that we are first and foremost a community of believers whose goal is to get each other and ourselves, God willing, to heaven. And secondly, to dip my toe back in that water and re-engage and be an active member of my faith, mm -hmm. not just a passive participant. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much for your time and I look forward to meeting all of you. Yeah.